Well, hello, hello. Hello, everyone out there in the webinar verse. I am Julia from Booksy, and with me on um, the separate window is Taz from Booksy. And leading our webinar today is the amazing Taylor Levin of Headspace. And you may have noticed I'm in a slightly different window than normal. That's because Taylor needs someone for the short hair transformation cut. So we're going to have that conversation over here. And um, before I turn the mic over to her to introduce yourself, I'm going to let you know if you want to see what the full and complete before shot looks like, you can go to Taylor's Instagram, check her stories, and you'll see that. And Taz is going to be our moderator for today, so she'll handle all of the questions that come around. But for now, Taylor, uh, would you like to tell all the folks Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and thank you so much to Booksy for inviting me here to teach this class today. It's right up my alley. We're going to be doing what we're going to call the breakup cut, which as you can guess, we're chopping all her hair off because that's what you do when you go through a breakup. It's going to be super fun. And after we finish this webinar, I'm actually going to be totally lightening her hair and doing a drastic color change as well. So stay tuned to the Booksy story as well as my story for the complete look afterwards. If you did want to check out the before, you can go to my story on my Instagram, which is by, B-Y, period, Taylor, T-A-Y-L-O-R, Levin, L-E-V-E-N. All right, so do you guys want to say anything before we kind of roll into this? Yeah, before we get going, just want to let everyone know. So this is part of our ongoing continuing education series with Booksy. So we hope that you get a lot out of this webinar. It's going to be really fantastic. We're going to be able to be picking Taylor's brains while she shows off how to go through this entire process, including that whole client conversation that's involved. Um, but then for the rest of this quarter, for now through March, we've got a really great series of social media webinars coming up, all focused around marketing yourself on Instagram, marketing on social media. And uh, Taz will um, has links for all of that. She'll be dropping them to people as we go. And if there's any questions that you have as we go, Taylor and I can't see those, but Taz can. So let her know in the chat if there's any questions that you have and just shout them out and uh, we'll be able to get all of Taylor's expertise as we go. That's all. Thanks, Julia. A quick one on the side, guys. I am here. I will be dropping the links. I just dropped the link for Taylor's Instagram. Please do check out the before. And I will continuously just check your questions, throw it over to Taylor as we work through the webinar. But I am here for any questions or any support that you guys need. So back over to you guys. I'm very excited to see this webinar and be part of it as well. Perfect. Awesome. All right, let's get started. I just want to give a little bit of bio about myself. Um, I am a licensed cosmetologist as well as a licensed barber. So throughout my career, I've kind of grown to love these pixie cuts and big transformations. So I'm going to be giving you guys my tips and tricks today. And one of the biggest things when you're doing a transformation is going to be the consultation. The consultation is the most important part because you have no idea what's under here, right? <laughs> Especially if they've never been short before and they don't have any like previous pictures to show you. So you really want to be able to take your time in the consultation and just envision what's going to look best and also just communicate like what their lifestyle is like, their preferences, what's going to look best with their face shape. So it normally does take a little bit longer when you're doing a transformation. So what I like to do is actually offer a service on my Booksy um, booking app. There's a transformation cut option. So what that does, it actually allows me 30 extra minutes on top of my regular service just to kind of talk and visualize and figure out what's going to be best. I did most of the consultation before we tuned in here, and it basically involves me just like looking deeply into your soul and <laughs> envisioning. It was probably really awkward for her. It's a very dusty place. <laughs> but I do like to do that just because if you start cutting and you haven't really thought that through, midway through the cut, you could be like, oh, that would have looked so much better. So I've noticed the more time you spend in the consultation, the better results you're, you'll get and the easier the cut's gonna be because you're really taking time to figure out step by step what the game plan is. So I'm going to go through what our consultation kind of looks like. So she really said, like, honestly, I don't care. I just want to go short, right? 
I did, yeah. I was actually considering going all the way to bald this January. So when I first reached out to Taylor, I said, all I know is I want it really short and I don't care what color it is. And then on the phone, I also told her my hair is really thick and it's somewhere around a level seven, a little bit darker blonde, um, the, the natural hair itself. And that's all that I said. And if I'd been a normal client coming in, like Taylor said, she has that transformation cut. Like as soon as I went to the Headspace page, I saw that button right there and it was so obvious to me. So. Yes, and obviously if we were just going to buzz your head today, it would be a pretty boring um, <laughs> learning experience because I'm sure all of you know how to do that. But we'll do a cute pixie today, and if you want to go shorter, more power to you. But I love when clients come in and they're kind of like open-minded because a lot of times when people come in and they know exactly what they want and they have a picture and they just want exactly that, they don't have the same hair type. They don't have the same face shape. They don't have the same, um, they don't want to do the maintenance that comes with it, right? A lot of times people will show us pictures and it's like, yeah, that's super cute, but you're going to have to see me every four weeks and your appointment's going to take four hours and it's going to cost this. And you're going to have to style your hair every day. And it's sometimes a wake up call, but it's very, very important to educate your clients on you know, the sustainability and the maintenance. So when I do the consultation, I really like their hair to be dry, but just for like time saving, I already washed her hair. But when I did the original consultation, I'm really just like digging into her hair and looking for colics, looking for what the hair wants to do and like really getting my hands in there, feeling the head shape, feeling that occipital bone, feeling for any um, areas where there might not be as much density, any bumps, and specifically for short haircuts, I really want to look at that neckline. Either their hair is going to grow down really nice, or it's going to grow upwards. Her hair grows down really nice, so what that means is we're able to get kind of like that pieciness along the neckline. As for my hair, my neckline grows straight up. So a lot of times if someone wants to rock a really short haircut, the best option for that is just going to be to take the clippers and really taper that out tight or else it's going to grow right out. And if they wanted to have that pieciness, it's going to have to be very long for it to even be able to lay down. So now you're getting more into the mullet type of haircut, which is totally cool, but you need to discuss that with them and make sure that that's what they want. So I noticed that the neckline is gonna be really nice to have some pieciness. Next thing I'm looking at is the hairline. And I'm just visualizing what's gonna look great with her face shape. The first thing I noticed was that she has gorgeous eyes, right? So I really want those to pop, and I really want these cheekbones to pop. When I combed her bangs down, I noticed, since they're wet right now, you can't see the colics as much, but her bangs do kind of bounce up a little bit, and they're very, very straight, right? So these corners in here are a little bit short. So what I want to do is actually maintain this and kind of bring out the corner in the fringe, and shorten up the center. So it's almost going to be like a curtain fringe, a very short curtain fringe, but a curtain fringe, if that. <laughs> so what that's going to do is actually kind of open up the eyes, and it's going to build weight on these cheekbones. So it's going to kind of like widen the eye area, bring up those cheeks, and just kind of like open up her face overall. Then I'm going to create some nice little sideburns, which are also going to kind of like hug those cheekbones and just kind of sit right there to create a nice shape and face frame. So that's kind of what I felt like was going to be most flattering on her. This took me like 20 minutes to figure out what I was going to do. So I really recommend you guys book a transformation or create a transformation option in your booking now. All right, are you ready? Let's do it. It's going to be good. So as you get started, you mentioned that about, about having people create a transformation cut if this is the type of style that they really want to offer for clients. 
what gave you the idea to go that direction of actually establishing that as its own cut? I think there were a few times where they would come in and they would want a transformation cut and, you know, they wouldn't know exactly what they wanted. And I would be like, oh, I'm running out of time. I just kind of have to, you know, start cutting. And, you know, it happened a few times where I was like, if I would have just taken like a few more minutes to really just envision and think, I would have thought like, oh, this would have been better. Mm. So just taking that extra time. So that's brilliant. Not so rushing into it, you know. So learn from, learn from Taylor's genius here. <laughs> Absolutely. Before we get into the weeds, Danny Noonan says, hi, Taylor. Hi. Thanks for tuning in. All right. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just really remove a lot of this length and get it out of my way here. The time is now. Here we go. Bring it up. <laughs> oh, I just heard it like slap on the ground. <laughs> just so dramatic. I mean, really, if you're going for a dramatic cut, whether you're breaking up with a significant other or, you know, breaking up with 2021 or whatever that is, you might as well make it dramatic. <laughs> Love it. All right. So the next thing that I'm going to do is section the hair. And I'm going to do so by dividing the parietal ridge to the natural hair growth along the occipital. occipital. So I'm going to comb the hair back with the wide teeth in my comb and just see like where that hair naturally wants to part. So, okay, as you might be able to tell, I've spent a little while growing my hair long. Um, what are some of the things that I should be aware of going into a short haircut? Like what are the things that you would tell to a client who hasn't done short in a while or possibly ever? That's a really good question. So I kind of like to give them a heads up. A lot of people think that short hair is like significantly easier. It actually is a little bit more maintenance. It might be easier on the day to day, but you have to just be aware you're going to have to get haircuts like every four weeks. Um, even though it is short, a lot of times you still do need to blow dry it and you still do need to style it. Sometimes even straighten it. Um, so I just like to give them a heads up on that. So a big part of my cutting style is cutting the hair how it naturally wants to fall. A lot of times we get stuck in this idea where every section has to be like totally symmetrical on each side and every section has to be a perfectly straight line. But the truth of the matter is our hair growth isn't perfect and everyone has different hair growth. So to do the same sectioning on every head just doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. So I'm just kind of combing the hair in the crown and figuring out, figuring out what hair is growing forward and what hair is growing backwards. And as you can see, this is totally asymmetrical on both sides, but that's okay. <laughs> and that's honestly pretty normal but I don't want to fight the hair growth. So one of the reasons that we chose this as the cut to focus on for this quarter is that it's predicted to be a really big trend this year. These these big dramatic cuts, more than they happen in the past. Is that something that you've been seeing here in the salon or seeing online more than you had in the past yet? I've definitely noticed that a lot of people are shaving their heads. I feel like that's a big trend um, of this year. 
I think a lot of people after COVID have this new mentality where they're just like, I could die tomorrow, honey. I'm just going to do what I want and stop waiting. So now people are just like getting mullets and going to their corporate office and not really giving a crap. And I love that. So I'm just going to zoom in on that section. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, I just paid close attention to how the hair naturally grew. And that's how I decided where I was going to section everything. Okay. So now I'm just going to start building up graduation along the side. Very important to keep the hair fully saturated throughout the cut. It also makes it a lot easier to section the hair without um, clips. So the first thing I'm going to do is take that first section along the hairline. And for this section, I like to just kind of like freehand it and visually see where I want all of that to lay. So I'm going to look right at her face and see where that cheekbone is. And I want it all to perfectly hook that cheekbone. Now keep in mind that the hair is going to shrink a little bit when it dries, about a quarter of an inch. So I'm keeping that in mind as I cut. All right, I'm thinking that's going to be cute to start with. And whenever I dry the hair, I can always go back and make things shorter and fine tune. But that's going to be kind of what I base the um, graduation off of on the sides. So now I'm just taking diagonal back sections. And the reason that I'm doing diagonal sections is because, first of all, it's very comfortable for my body. And I want to take care of my body so that I can do hair forever. And when your fingers are on a diagonal, it's easier to build weight. So what that means is I can create a blend between longer hair to shorter hair in a smaller space. So the more of an angle that my fingers are on, the more of an, a, a dramatic life change that I can have. So if I were to do vertical sections, it would be much harder for me to blend a long length to a shorter length because in order for me to do so, I would have to literally pull my hands all the way down and cut hair like this. Hmm. A little difficult. So I'm going to stick with the diagonal sections. I hope that made sense. And please feel free to ask as many questions as possible. There are no dumb questions. <laughs> well, here's one for me, and I think it's a it's a client conversation question. So perfect, come from in the chair. Now, obviously, when I came in, I said all I want is something dramatic, and it can be you know whatever color. Let's please not do ash blonde. But what if I had come in and said you know seeing a lot of conversations online right now of people coming in with like I don't care what it is, but I want this color, and it's like this ridiculous you know gradation of black to white to pink or whatever. How do you have those conversations with clients who are uh, really clueless on the process? Well, one thing that we do here is we also book color consultations. Um, I think that's really important because 
especially with time, it's just like you never know what you're getting into. So that's something that we like to do and just kind of like lay it out for them and explain the process sometimes because I think that sometimes when you throw out that the price or how long it's going to take, they don't get it. They just think it's completely ridiculous. And then you explain to them, well, this is like a four step process. I don't just put the color on your hair. I have to take the color out. Then I have to tone it. Then I have to put this color in. Then I have to rinse that color out before I put the next color in or they're going to bleed together. And then they're like, oh, wow, that is a lot of work you like. So just keeping that conversation going and making sure that there's no like unanswered questions because that's when it can get a little awkward when they show up and, you know, there's things they weren't expecting. So I'm actually putting my knuckles on the widest point of the head, which is right above the ear. And I'm pulling my fingertips out towards me. So what that's going to do is just create a little bit of a buildup of weight in that parietal ridge. And then I'm choosing a point cutting method just because she has really thick hair. And I want to have movement in there. So I think point cutting is going to allow me to create that. So I'm just working my way back here. So now I'm getting to the section right behind the ear. So now we start to have hair that moves all the way down towards the nape. And I told you guys earlier, I really want to have some like pieciness along the neckline. So above the ear, my knuckles are touching the head, right? So now as I go to cut the hair along the nape, my fingertips are going to stay touching the head, but my knuckles are going to pull towards me. And what that's going to do is allow me to maintain some weight along the nape but still keep that tight shape above the ear. So basically what I'm doing is I'm creating weight in the parietal ridge, tightening it right above the ear, and then creating some more length and pieciness right along the nape. Make sense? As I'm talking to myself. <laughs> Louisa Morales says, nice, thank you. I think she's talking about the explanation about how you hold your hand, because that was very thorough. Beautiful explanation. Thanks, Taylor. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Yes. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I have to say, for me, the biggest trick is when you say something that's very clever, and I'm like, ah, oh, yes, that makes sense. I can't not right now. <laughs> two years of, of, of Zoom calls and video calls and webinars. So, you know, being being very like, ah, oh, yes, that makes sense. Let me show it makes sense. Bad idea. <laughs> I will say I'm the worst client. Yeah. It is so hard for me to stand still when I get my hair cut. <laughs> or like if a good song comes on, it, it takes all of my focus to not move. So I'm just working my way back. And when I grab the hair, I'm not pulling my fingers down exactly where I'm going to cut because I'm point cutting. So I'm actually pulling the hair down about a, maybe a half an inch above where I actually want to cut. And then I'm creating little, um, like diagonal pointing lines. So I'm gonna zoom in on this other camera so you can really get a close up of what I'm doing here. So if you start cutting in the nape and it gets uncomfortable for your wrist and your hand positioning, a lot of times you can just kind of tilt their head downward 
and it's a little bit easier to get in there. So I'm taking my next section. And as I said, I'm holding my hair a little bit above where I want to cut. So as you can see, that's my previous guy. I'm point cutting so it's not a perfectly straight line. But you can still see where I cut. And now for this bottom section, like I said, my fingertips are touching the, the head, but my knuckles are pulling outwards to maintain length. So there's my guide. And I do a lot of my detailing in the nape once the hair is dry, just because it bounces up a lot. As someone with very weighty hair, I appreciate that. But <laughs> this is a bit of me, Taylor. I think the zoomed in view that we can actually see, you know, the in depth workings of what you're doing, then it says this is a bit of you. So, thumbs up from our side. Oh, good? Awesome. That's what we like to hear. Mm -hmm. That's not what we want to share. Let me just uh, see if the microphone goes. Let's spin. I'm going to cheat you guys with this moment. <laughs> you don't want that echo. Intermission. <laughs> All good, Questions? No questions as of now in the chat, but we are getting a few participants that are joining as we speak. So I'm just referencing back to your IG where they can check out the before, because that will be very interesting for them to see if they're just catching us right now. Perfect. Thank you, Jeff. That's a really good point because obviously Taylor's people mind are very wet right now for this cut. So <laughs> the the amount of directions that it's inclined to go dry doesn't come through at this moment. So you just have to sort of remember and everything you thought about that, don't you? Yeah, so that's why I love to do the consultation dry and really get the entire vision for the haircut before I shampoo them. So anytime we have a first time client at Headspace, we take them straight to the chair and we do the consultation. And I look for a lot of things. I'm looking at their shoes, I'm looking at their clothes, and you know, Andrew does here always says this and I love it. He says, your job is to tell the client's story, right? You're not just cutting their hair, you're telling their story through their hair so you have to like 
kind of read them and figure out who they are as a person to know what's going to flatter them. And one of the first things I noticed about you were your flare jeans. <laughs> I was like, okay, okay, that's cute. I'm getting like 70s vibes. So that's why I was like, you know what? Let's do a curtain fringe. I think it'll go with your style. I think it'll go with your your vibe and your personality. I think it'll be pretty easy to maintain based off of your hair growth. So there's always things to consider beyond just the hair. How long do they spend on their hair in the morning is another good, great question. Mm -hmm. And you said you don't really like to have your hair air dry, right? Yeah, that makes a big difference for me. And I'm one of those people who, I may not condition it that much, but that's because I'm putting hair oil in it. On the ends. So, I like to really just let it air dry and then have that oil for this to smooth on top. Love that. So when she said air dry, I'm like, okay, I have to do something that's not going to be, you know, too different from the way her hair naturally wants to fall. And her hair was already falling a little bit forward. So I didn't want to go and give her like a pompadour or something where she's going to have to run brush it every day and, you know, tease it and put hair spray in it. So I'm just really going with the fall of her natural hair growth to make her life easier on a day to day basis. This is a fun day for work for you, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you, usually I'm I'm seated right about where Taz is, more or less. Where, where I'm, keeping an eye on questions and just sort of having the conversation going, but um, with the world being the way that it is, I haven't been in person with people very often lately. So, and then that's a conversation that's there too. So for, for the instance of this webinar, you and I had the conversation of, are we both okay not wearing masks in order to make sure that it's as clear as possible for everyone, but, but that's another thing that has to come into play too, especially these days. I'm sure you get people with um, a lot of different comfort levels for just various things day to day. All right, and most of the time we do just keep the mask on the whole time unless we're doing like a beard grooming service. But I'm actually glad we're having this conversation because if I'm doing a transformation haircut, I am not going to do that haircut unless I see your face. Because how am I supposed to figure out what's going to look good on you if I don't even know what you look like, you know? So a lot of times I will ask them, you know, if you're comfortable, can you just remove your mask for a few seconds just so I can really visualize what's going to be the most flattering on your face shape, you know? Mm -hmm. And so much so when it's a transformation cut, yeah. Have you tilt your head down a little bit? I'm still just working my way around the head, and now I'm getting along with that occipital bone, so I really want to make sure I'm not removing too much weight. There's my guide, and I'm just point cutting through. I'm resting that back blade on my um, ring finger. And I'm just point cutting. If you haven't tried point cutting a, an entire haircut, it's really weird. Let's see if we back it up a little bit better. There we go. All right, brilliant. Um, if you haven't tried point cutting an entire haircut, I recommend doing so, especially for people that want movements and maybe they have like really thick hair. It's really good for people with thick hair because it's going to create a lot of airy movements and texture and it's going to save you some time. 
So if you were to go through and just do a blunt cut on the entire head, and then go through and have to literally pick up every single hair and texturize it, it's going to take a lot longer. So if you go into the haircut and you know they have a lot of hair, and I'm going to have to texturize it a lot, try just point cutting it from the beginning. Mm. So that there aren't any blunt lines that you have to take out. Loving that craziness that's coming through. You can kind of see that weight that's being built up in here. It gets a little bit tighter here, and then it just kind of flares out along that neckline. Cute. All right, we're going to go on this other side here. Brilliant. So obviously everyone should be following Taylor's Instagram anyway, because she's brilliant and it's just massive hair inspiration all the time. But um, there's there are some new things coming down the booksy pipeline that Taylor's been a bit involved in. So definitely you should be following her simply because of those, um, which I'll just, I'll leave that there because that will start tomorrow. But Taz, we've got a campaign that's actually on its last day today. Do you want to tell everybody about that? Yeah, absolutely. Well, when Taylor started talking about Booksy, I had already dropped that in the chat because we had so many people joining at the time. Today is the last day for our Switch to Better Booksy, Switch to Better Booking campaign with Booksy, where you will get Booksy for $1 for three months. And like I said, today is the last day. So I dropped it in the chat earlier, but here you guys go again. If you are interested in checking out Booksy at a dollar for three months, there is a link that you could qualify for that promotional discount. Now, Taz, should we switch to the other angle, or do you think this is a good angle right now? Everybody's actually loving this angle. Um, it's a lot more clear. It is pretty zoomed in, so we can see the color. It's very, very clear. So if you're comfortable with this angle, we can continue. But Possibly, maybe when you do go back to showing the front view, we can switch cameras. So depending on you, how do you feel most comfortable? Yeah, so we are going to be working in the front now just because I'm creating that first guideline. So I'm just looking at the length that I chose on the other side so that I can make sure that it's like totally even on both sides. And the reference point that I'm going to use is the eyebrow. So I can see it's about half an inch from the eyebrow at the top. And then the sideburn is going to hit right right below her cheekbone. So now I'm just going to create that guide at the bottom here. So now this is a shape that I haven't particularly had before. So what should I be keeping in mind uh, when styling to have this fall in my nose? So I'll definitely kind of go over some styling techniques at the end when we blow dry. Um, but you did mention in our consultation that the shorter that your hair gets, it begins to have a bit more of a weight, correct? Yes. So I have an awesome straightening gel that I'm going to recommend putting in your hair, and it's going to help us to just kind of smooth, smooth out and kind of deep frizz. When people do big transformations like this, it's so important to recommend products because the products that they were previously using are probably completely useless <laughs> for short hair. <laughs> yep. Taylor, I'm going to quickly switch the microphone from the one camera to the other. Some of the guys are saying they are hearing an echo. So just give me one second while I switch that over, OK? No problem. Taylor, can you quickly uh, just unmute on the laptop over there? Perfect. 
There we go. That's perfect. Thank you so much. Awesome. So I'm just creating the sideburn on this side, making sure it's symmetrical with the other. Just resting that back blade on her cheekbone and making sure to only close the top one so that I have control. I think we may need to go to one camera to avoid yeah. and maybe like just log out on your phone. That's definitely thing. Yeah. Sorry about the ringing, everyone. Carrying on. <laughs> so now I'm going to be doing diagonal back sections on this side. So on the other side, I was pivoting off my knuckles. And now that I'm taking diagonal back on the opposite side of the head, I'm actually going to be pivoting off my fingers. So I'm going to place my fingers on the widest point of the head, and I'm just going to pull my knuckles towards me to try to match the angle that I used on the other side. So what I'm gonna do to make sure that both sides are even is I'm actually gonna go to the other side and I'm going to take my comb. So this comb has these little um, holes in it, which I find really good for measuring length. So I'll just kind of hold the comb right at the roots, pull the hair out and determine how many you know holes long it is. And then I'll pull that onto this side so that I can make both sides totally symmetrical. I'll just comb up, come over here. Awesome. And I'll just make that first guy. So now when I pull the hair out, I'll just connect that bottom length with length with the longest length. Again, making sure that the hair stays fully saturated. So Taylor, for you, when you get a request for a big change, whether it's a change in terms of style or color or both, do those tend to come for you from clients that you've had for a long time, or do you tend to get more people sort of out of the blue reaching out to you for that, or is it a mix? Um, well, I do specialize in short hair, so a lot of times if it is going to be a big change, it's going to be like their first time coming to me, because I don't have too many clients that have like really, really long hair. So normally it is kind of their first time. I think that's a really good um, thing that you pointed out. Can we, can we sit on that for a minute? So you, just like you said, you, you specialize in short hair. And if, if you haven't seen Taylor's booksy video, it's really amazing. Absolutely check it out. Um, but one of the things that you talk about is the idea that hair in and of itself has no gender. So um, how, how would you say that you sort of came onto that as, as a statement and, and what has that been looking like for you in your career? Well, I've always worked at barber shops and people that are on here that are new to the industry are probably going to be like um, surprised by this because the industry has changed so much in literally just five years. But when I started barbering and started trying to work at shops, 
there were no like female barbers. There were very few. It was very, very rare. And I like literally could not even get hired anywhere as a female barber. When I finally got a job at a barber shop, I noticed girls would come in um, or even or even like gay men or LGBTQ and they just like did not feel comfortable. They didn't feel like they could be themselves. And specifically when you want a feminine haircut but you want it to be short, it's gonna be a totally different method that you're using to cut the hair. And a lot of times people that specialized in short hair back then were strictly barbers. So they made all the shapes very, very sharp and masculine. And these people that just wanted very like feminine pixie cuts didn't really know where to go because when you went to a salon, they were, they would always, you know, they didn't want to go short, you know, they're like, are you sure? I don't feel comfortable. What if you don't like it? And so I just really found that to be my niche. I'm like, well, it's our job to provide a service for someone. And how are we allowed to like pick and choose, you know, what that the gender of that person is or, you know, be in such a box that some people don't fit in that box. So I've just found it's been my niche to kind of cater to anyone. And let the client choose how they want their hair. I feel like a lot of times, um, specifically when I started in the industry, someone would ask for, you know, a really, really short, almost buzz cut on a female. And they'd come to me and they'd be like, everywhere I've gone, they just won't go that short because they tell me that it won't look feminine or that it won't look good. You know what I mean? And at the end of the day, it's our job to be like their stylist. And if that's what style that they want to rock, it's our job to do that for them and to provide that service. And most importantly, make them feel comfortable getting that service. So that's just been something that I've been really passionate about because I found that there was just this gray area where like a lot of people didn't know if they should go to a salon or a barber shop. And I've just always wanted to kind of cater to both. And I never understood that. All these people came in and they're like, oh, I want to, I've always wanted to shave my head, but no one will do it for me. I will shave anyone's head. <laughs> it is such a liberating experience. I think that everyone should do it at least once in their life. It just really, I can't even explain it, but it just really helps you, I guess, like detach um, from the idea of like, this is who I am, this is my identity, and realize that like, you're so much more than your appearance, you're so much more than you know, what people see when they first look at you. Our identity is so much more than that, so. Shave your head at some point. <laughs> love that, love that. Very free. Yeah. Have you um, kept track of how many heads you've shaved in your lifetime? In the past year, I've lost like so many of my clients because they just shaved their head now. And I'm like not even mad because I'll see them on Instagram and I'm just like, yes, like you are killing it. I'm so happy for you. Um, and Danny in the chat says, I definitely agree with you, Taylor, especially when you spoke about, um, you know, your hair or your identity and shaving, how liberating that is. So Danny agrees with you in the chat. Especially for women, like a lot of times we're just raised to believe that like we're supposed to have long hair and we're supposed to look a certain way. And when you shave your head, you just realize that like all these stereotypes and all these like expectations that society makes have nothing to do with you and don't, they don't control you. And you can do whatever you want, you can look however you want, and you can be whoever you want. Mm. 
So you said that you really found your, your niche in doing these shortcuts. How do you market yourself in such a way that people know that they can find you for that? I get a lot of referrals from other hairstylists. I get a lot of barbers sending clients to me who want like more texture and movement and maybe their top but still want that fade on the sides. And it's very flattering. But just from a, a business and like career perspective, it's so limiting that so many people want to stay inside this box. And they're so happy telling their clients to go somewhere else. I don't get why so many of us are so um, hesitant to learn new skills so that we can better service our clients and so that when our clients do decide, oh, I'm not gonna wear my hair like this anymore, I wanna wear it a different way, you can still keep them as a client, you can educate yourself and grow in different realms of the industry which will keep you fulfilled and keep you motivated. Like that's the best thing about what we do is you're never gonna know everything so the more, the more realms of the industry that you jump into, the more motivated you're going to be. So I just really encourage you guys to just do everything. Love that. In the chat, Danny says, I think short hair women look absolutely beautiful in really short hair. I agree, Danny. And uh, we have Louisa Morales who says, I've definitely sent you a few referrals. Also, the reason the reason she is here today is to learn. So, Louisa, thank you so much for joining. Yeah, Taylor is putting some gems over here. Love that. On top of that, just utilizing your social media and whatever it is that you want in your chair, you have to post that. If people don't see these short haircuts, on your Instagram, they're just going to assume that you don't do them. Mm -hmm. So if you want to start doing something new, a new um, length of hair, a new style of hair, it might be worth just offering it to someone for free and getting a lot of content on it just so that now people know that you offer it and they can see, oh, wow, they did this style and it looks really good. Now I trust them. So whatever you post is what you'll you'll see in your chair. So I'm still just taking those diagonal sections. I'm gonna have you tilt your head down a little bit. So anytime you're working in the nape, try to just tilt their head down a little bit so that it's easier on your finger positioning. Finding that guide, resting the back blade on my ring finger, and just point cutting. As I get to the lower part of the nape, I'm not following the head shape anymore. I'm actually just pulling slightly away so that I have a little bit of length in the nape to create that PC and textured look. All right, I'm working towards the last few sections here. So those diagonal sections are gonna sort of overlap.
That pieciness is looking so good on the neckline. I'm so excited to see what it looks like dry. Here's a question in the chat, Taylor, that I personally love. Louisa Morales asks, who is your biggest inspiration in the industry? Um, I guess my question for you would be artistically or more <laughs> like, like who is my artistic inspiration or who is like my business entrepreneurial inspiration? Because I have a few different people. Uh, she says, I was about to say, like, cutting style. Cutting style. Um, I love Andrew Does Hair. He He's really just big on um, doing what's best for the clients. I think a lot of times we get caught on making the haircuts look, like, very, very sharp or very, like, technically good instead of bringing out them as a person and bringing out their own unique style not everyone wants like a really clean perfect fade not everyone wants a really blunt line you know sometimes we have to get away from the technical part of the industry and go more creative what did i say whatever i said so then i think one of the one of the the things that I'd be curious. We have all of these people in this webinar with us, so so shout out if you're if you're in the webinar today. Are you a person who does big transformation cuts on clients? And if you are, what's your favorite thing about doing them? And if you're not, what is it that has you not do them? There's no wrong answers here, but I think that'd be a neat thing for us to be able to address while we have a master of transformation cuts with us. Hello? We're filming. <laughs> so, but actually, so you just, you answered, well, well, while they're thinking about whether they want to get over their shyness to answer that, um, you just answered in terms of, of some of your, your cut and style inspirations, but I'm curious from the entrepreneurial perspective, because that's obviously, like, you need to have the vision in terms of the creativity, but you also need to be able to manage everything else. Um, so I would be curious about some of your inspirations from the business side of things. I really love following the original Barbara doll. She's a book mm. scene user as well. Um, but she's just a really powerful, strong woman that I love to follow. She basically came from nothing and she totally changed her life around. She was literally homeless and just completely changed her life around through cutting hair. Now she has her own barber shop and she's killing it. She posts a lot of um, stuff about her story, a lot of inspirational, um, motivational stuff. And if you go to her Instagram page, you can find um, sort of like a documentary video on her story and it's just very motivating. And I've worked with her in person quite a bit and she's just an amazing woman so i love following her and she is very vulnerable as well which i feel like we need more of in this industry mm -hmm. people that are just talking about like the bad days and you know it's not all glitter and gold all the time mm -hmm. and how to handle it and how to stay positive and how to stay motivated So something that you that you emphasized um, earlier was in terms of, of even taking someone on and just doing that free cut to be able to demonstrate those looks that you want to do and just what a difference that makes in terms of your social media presence. So if there's anyone in this webinar today who is looking at their their online presence in, you know, anxiety or despair i'll just say like some of us just feel feel the anxiety of it you know trying to be everything online but if you're having that that experience of of trying to figure out how you want to represent yourself as a professional online um we have a really great webinar for barber and beauty pros coming up on february 21 and the entire focus of that is um how to manage yourself in terms of marketing specifically on instagram 
Um, so Taz, if you want to uh, drop that information for them. Beautiful, I just did. Um, I put in the chat our upcoming webinar that Julia just mentioned with another one of our ambassadors, Christy Klebs, February 21st, Instagram marketing for barbers and beauty pros. If you click on the link, it will take you directly to that webinar to register for it. Um, so just expanding your knowledge with practical tools you can use in the industry. Awesome. Okay, so I finished the sides. Now I'm going to start working on the fringe. And so I section off the front perimeter of the fringe. And this is the length that she had before I started cutting, right? So as you can see, she has some um, quite of a curl pattern right in the temple regions. And she has a little bit of a colic here that is very pronounced when it dries. So I'm actually going to leave the length in the temple yeah. region because I saw when her hair was dry that it was like just long enough to like lay down and be like easy to maintain on a daily basis. So I'm leaving yeah. that length. Um, the center right in the front of her fringe lays pretty nicely down. So I'm actually gonna take that a little bit shorter. So what I'm gonna do is section off the center. Here, I'll pull this over to you. Oh, you're from your friend. So what I'm going to do is kind of comb it out. And just with my fingers, I'm kind of lifting it up and looking for a bounce. Yeah. And I'm just seeing, you know, how short can I go without it being an alfalfa? Right? So a big part of hair cutting I've found throughout the years is to just, like, take your time. Just take your time. Let the hair do what it needs to do. Don't get so like cut happy where you're just cutting, cutting, and rushing through. A lot of times you'll save yourself, save yourself extra steps if you just do it right the first time. Yeah, exactly. So it looks like we can go about up to here without it wanting to like really bounce up. So I'll just kind of inch away. Isn't it funny that this is the part that leaves me anxious? <laughs> All right, so that's how short we're going to go in the middle. Now I'm going to take the her right side. I'm going to comb it forward. And now this is the longest length that I want, and this is the shortest length that I want. So I'm just going to pull that. Angle it towards that center guide. I'm going to use light tension because she has that wavy, bouncy hair. I'll use light text, uh, tension and just kind of point cut. So the deeper that you go in with those point cuts, the more texture you're going to get. So we have the curtain on that side there. Now we'll take this side. And as this dries, I'll kind of play with it more and more and really start texturizing it. But we're just creating the general outline right now. So I'm taking the next section of the fringe. And I'm just going to follow that guideline underneath. Perfect. We have that cute curtain fringe happening. 
I'm excited about that, especially once we color it. <laughs> it's gonna be super cute and super edgy. So now we're gonna work with the layering on top here. So obviously the length of time for this cut's a little different because we're having the conversation along the way. But for a client who's coming in who's, you know, who hasn't had short hair in a very long time, if ever, is there anything that you do to prepare them for um, for, for the experience of having a, a big cut in color like this compared to, to like a normal style? Well, I can definitely tell if they're anxious. Mm. So I just kind of try to like hype them up. I'm like, girl, this is gonna be so cute. Like all throughout the haircut, like every time I I take a big cut, like on her fringe, I would have been like, girl, this looks so good. You're not even ready. When I took the big cut off the back where it plopped on the ground, I was like, <laughs> you're gonna love this. Just kind of like encouraging them because yeah. Sometimes when you're getting a haircut and they're not saying anything, you're making up stuff in your head like, oh my God, they hate it. They messed up. Mm. What's going on up, up there? They don't know what they're doing. So just kind of staying positive. Sometimes if there's like a part of the haircut that I know is going to freak them out, I'll turn them away until it's like finished. Because if they just see that immediate, like, like how I made the center of her fringe really short, like if she <laughs> just saw that one, she would have been like, oh my God, you're making all of them that short? Like, no, trust me, girl, I got you. So just kind of like walking them through it and giving them like positive reinforcement. Like, I got you. Danny James is love it, Taylor. Another thing to do in the consultation is explaining to them that like, you know, you're not just doing a haircut that is in style or like looks cool. You're doing a haircut that's gonna look good on them and make them look good and bring out their own personal style. Mm -hmm. So just kind of like reinforcing that you're catering the haircut to them just so that they know like you care too, you know, you're not gonna do something that it's going to make them look bad. There's a lot online right now of, of clients bringing in, you know, their inspo pictures and well, that's a wig. So th this seems like the, the type of conversation that would, that would lend itself to, um, to that as well. That moment of, well, that's not the hair on that person's head. <laughs> Totally, and just explaining like what's doable with their hair type, their hair texture. So now what I'm doing is taking a profile guideline down the center of the head, and I'm just using this um, length through the center of the fringe as my guideline. And I'm just doing some deep point cutting all the way through. So now since the hair is really long, I'll just kind of cut it out of my way. And now I can kind of see a little bit better. And then I'll really go through and do the deep point cuts. So I know we mentioned your Instagram earlier. I'm going to mention it again now because something that you did that was very smart. You know, I'm the excited client coming in, and I did a little, I did a little video before I came in, and was like, "All right, guys, I'm getting my hair cut off." But when I came in, you took me over to a screen and did a quick before video so that you have that content available as well, and you can use it afterwards. Is that something that you try to do every time that you're doing um, a, a big cut like this? 
Yes, I always try to do a before picture, but you know, we tend to forget. <laughs> or I'll get the before picture and forget the after. Mm. It's always something, but I definitely try because I think transformation pictures are, um, I think they say a lot because they show that the artist is doing more than a haircut and they're looking at like what is going to look good on that person from starting from scratch. When someone comes in and you're just like giving them a trim, you already know what's going to look good on them because they already kind of like have that haircut. But if they come in with long hair and long short hair, it's really your job to be the visionary and really just vision what's going to look good. So I'm following the head shape along the crown here and still doing those deep point cuts. And I'm actually connecting it with the guide from those diagonal back sectionings in the um, occipital bone here. So basically my shape for the top layering, I took the guide from the fringe and I'm just rounding it. And then connecting the length back here with the length from the diagonal back. So now we have this nice round shape, and now I'm going to comb that guide to the right. And now I'm going to take horizontal sections. We'll resaturate just for a little bit more control. Now when I comb the guideline down to the side and I take these horizontal sections, I'm actually gonna leave the fringe out because I really liked the density and the tempo there and I know that I need to leave that density alone in order for it to have a nice shape. So I'm combing it out of my way and I can kind of play with it at the end. So I combed that out of my way and now I'm gonna take horizontal sections leaving the fringe out. Getting rid of some of the length so that I can really get, have control over what I'm doing. And now I'm connecting that guide in the center. with the guide from the diagonal back sectioning on the side. So one shot from the front. this extra length. <laughs> I have the guide right in the center here. I'm going to find the length from the diagonal sectioning on the side. And now I'm just connecting those two lengths. So it's rounding to the head. And I'll just let everyone know as um, we are we are at the, the 15 minutes, the end mark for, for this particular webinar. But if there are pieces from our breakup cut webinar that you're going, oh, gosh, that was really, really great. I wish I could remember exactly. Or, oh, so-and-so needs to see that. Don't worry. This webinar will be available on the Booksy YouTube channel. 
And on the Books at YouTube channel, we've got an entire webinars playlist where you can catch up on a lot of our fantastic um, webinar education past and, and present, of course. Um, so aside from the great upcoming content that we have, if you want to catch up on this webinar after the fact or on any of our recent webinars, you can find them all there as well. Thanks so much, Julia. I just dropped our YouTube link into our chat. If you guys do want to check out this webinar or a plethora of webinars that we have done before, all of it is on there for you guys to check back and reference after the fact as well. And Danny says, thank you for that. So I'm going to comb the guide to the left now and do the horizontal sections on this side. We'll section off the fringe just so we can have that extra weight to play around with once it dries. For everyone in the chat, coupled with the YouTube links, I've dropped our Booksy blog link for providers and our Booksy blog link for clients and customers for you guys to check out as well. Some pretty great articles on there um, and it spans from industry education right up until entrepreneurial backstories of some of the providers that we have highlighted on our blogs. Of course, Larissa, Larissa says thanks for those links. You're very, very welcome. Please do check it out. Some good information and education on all three of those links we just dropped in the chat right now. It's a perfect moment for another plug since she is here as our moderator for today. So everyone, you're seeing Tazneem here today as our moderator on this webinar. She is also our ambassador community manager. So when I mentioned that about our past educational webinars, if you go to that link, you can actually see uh, Taz with a few of our amazing ambassadors from our Booksy community talking about the Booksy Ambassador Program, what that looks like, what it involves. So if that's something that you've ever wondered about as a Booksy provider or just as someone in the greater beauty world, I highly encourage you to check that out. It's very informative and it really spells out why ambassadors and influencers matter to us from, a, from the perspective of Booksy, so. Thanks, Julia, yeah. That was a really informative um, webinar that we had, really fun, really engaging. So if you guys are interested to find out more information about our program, please do check it out. Thanks, Julia. Absolutely. And actually, since we've gone that direction, so Taylor, you're, you're a hairstylist, you're a barber, you're an entrepreneur, you're a shop owner, you are also a brand artist and you work for different brands. How do you, how do you find yourself um, making that balance so that it, it works for you and it works for your life and you know, like, do you have any special tips and tricks on that? Um, like learn to say no. Why have your hair on my face? That's <laughs> um, learn to say no to things that um, don't resonate with you. Mm. Not every opportunity is a good opportunity. And just like figuring out what resonates with your brand, what resonates with, you know, your goals in your career and if it if that's not um bringing you to the place that you want to work towards then it's okay to say no sometimes that's really really good advice <laughs> and a lot of times people are like oh i want to work for a company so they'll just like work for any company mm. and you know you have to make sure that that company aligns with your brand and what you stand for and your morals and um, you have to make sure that they kind of have the same vision and the same um, goals as you. You. Okay, we are going to blow dry the hair. We're going to put in a little bit of a straightening gel. So this is going to get rid of some of the frizz when blow drying. It's going to help to smooth the hair out. So I'm just going to pull saturate the hair it looks so good already taylor we have a quick question from donald burke in the chat 
He's asking, are you taking those back sections out from the shape of the head or straight up to the ceiling? So I actually followed the head shape in the back. So I went totally straight out from where the hair lives and rounded out. And then once I found the guide from the um, diagonal back graduation in the occipital, that's where I connected it. So it's totally rounded. So that will create a nice um, round shape and that's gonna help to remove some of the bulk because she has so much hair. <laughs> that was a great question. <laughs> Donald says, thank you very much. So I'm just going to kind of flat wrap the hair with a small paddle brush. Um, I'm going to remove 80% of the moisture on high power and medium heat. And then as some of the moisture is removed and I have about 20% moisture left, that's when I'm really going to start styling the hair. Um, positioning the fringe in the way that I'd like and so yeah so cute. You can see this weight built up in the crown here and a little bit of this cute little beefiness along the neckline. I'm loving it. The softness and the sideburn. I'm going to use my itty bitty round brush. I love this thing for short hair. Definitely recommend it. So 
I'm just um, using the round brush to create a little bit of volume right in the center. And then towards the outsides, I'm just going to comb into the forehead and get some of those hairs to kind of fan out towards the end. And now that the hair is mostly dry, I'm just going to go through with low power, um, medium heat, just to kind of smooth everything out. I don't know if you guys can hear me over the dryer, but Danny says, your new short haircut, Julia, looks great. And he has to go, but he says, thank you, Taylor. So because I chose to point cut the entire haircut, there isn't too much texturizing that I need to do. So you can already see that that's such a time saver. Mm -hmm. All I'm going to do is, you might not be able to tell all the way over there, but the density on this side of the fringe is a little bit um, less. So I'm just going to kind of even that out on this side. So I'm actually going to pull the fringe from underneath. Fan it out. And then I'm just going to go through and kind of slide cut some of these shorter pieces. I'm just going to go along the hairline and the nape and just kind of fine tune. We are about two minutes out, so what I'm going to do really quickly, I'm going to drop our Instagram handles in the chat once again, as we will be posting the after. So the before is up, so guys, check out our Instagram page for the after as well. So I'm going to drop that there really quickly. I'm just going to start styling with some dry spray wax. So then maybe as our last thought, what would you, when, you know, I come into this transformation cut, what is it that you want to make sure that you leave me with as the thing to be aware of? Other than, of course, my general joy at the haircut. But um, A lot of times I'll tell them, like, the first time that you do a big transformation from long to short, it's probably not going to be the style that you stick with because mm. it's such a big change that, you know, maybe you go into it and you're like, oh, yeah, I'm ready to style it, like, whatever I have to do. And then like two weeks later, you're like, no, this is not it. 
and you just figure out like just little maybe even the slightest change in the shape of the fringe or anything like that um it takes a few haircuts to really know exactly what you want so just to kind of be open-minded and like vocal too mm. if you don't tell your hairstylist the things that you know you didn't love about it or they won't know you know what they need to improve on so i just took a dry texture paste And I'm just kind of fully saturating the hair and piecing everything out where I want it. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today for this webinar on the breakup cut, a dramatic short hair transformation, which this clearly is with Taylor Levin. Um, you can see how amazing this cut, how very distinct it is already. And don't forget, if you are not following Taylor yet, make sure that you do so so that you can see the full full before and after with all cut color everything on taylor's page and you'll also find that on the books page as well taylor anything you want to leave them with i think i want to do a little zoom in on your hair okay. so that i can really see i am so excited right now i have no words it looks gorgeous Love it. Oh, love this little PC, the PCness in the back. So yeah, if you guys have any questions, feel free to DM me on Instagram um, at b y period Taylor T A Y L O R eleven L E V E N. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for supporting Booksy. And if you're watching this on YouTube, we will have Taylor's Instagram link right there in the copy so you can click on that as well. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Stay tuned. There is a very big announcement coming on the Booksy page. That's all I can say. But there's a very big announcement coming tomorrow. It's very, very exciting. And um, then, of course, stay tuned. February 21, we have our next Barbers and Beauty Pros webinar, and it's specifically focused on Instagram marketing for Barbers and Beauty Pros. Thank you all so much for joining us. We hope that you got something out of it. And um, I certainly have learned so much from you. You are absolutely brilliant. So oh, thank you, Taylor. Thank you. Oh, and be sure to tune in. We're about to color her hair, too. So we're only halfway done on this transformation. Tune in to Booksy's story as well as mine for the final result. Awesome. Thank you, guys. This was so much fun. Everybody in the chat loves the cat. Looks so good. Yeah, Thanks, Taylor. Thanks, Julia.